Well, friends, as we come into Memorial Day weekend, I wanted to take a minute just to update the tank status. This is the bow tank in the living room that you've seen many times before, and those pearl garamis always look so great. Um, what's new in this tank? Well, you know, over time I've noticed certain plants do well at certain times and others fade, and I wish I understood the chemistry of that, and I've had enough uh, working with the chemical agents to uh, for that to be nothing more than an excuse to understand why, for example, right now the anacris that you're seeing here to the right and to the left, and that is uh, a small plant that I bought at Petco, and it's doing very well. Green, growing long stems, thriving. On the other side is some of the same, uh, but that just came out of the office tank. It was uh, kind of scraggly, but it seems to be reacting well to its new home here. And so what is it that makes that work? And then that beautiful center plant that we've been talking about is down to only like two or three leaves. That one right there. The uh, algae has overtaken some of the leaves and I've pinched them off as they've died. But uh, that was thriving. It must have had about ten big leaves on it and uh, now it's down to just two or three. Now the other thing that I'm very pleased with is the color in the hygrophila that you see here. You see the reddish on the ends of the stems and that's doing very well. The, the stems of the plant that have been in there a while have a lot of algae on the stem itself but the leaves seem to be still hanging in there and uh, adding some real different color in that reddish ends that you see there. And so I'm very pleased with that and that seems to be thriving too despite the algae. And I've been working hard at the algae, okay? I've uh, actually, the tank looked real scrungy uh, back just a week or so ago. Uh, and what it was was some of the gravel had the algae growing on the individual pebbles. And so for the past week, uh, every other night or so, I've got my hands in the tank and actually taken out one piece of gravel at a time. And so right now it looks pretty clean and uh, it's making the whole tank look pretty good. The other thing that I did, and I think I may have mentioned that in the last update, and that was I turned this light off in the afternoon now from noon until five. I used to turn it off for two hours, now I'm turning it off for five hours. So comes on around 7.30 in the morning, goes off at noontime, comes back on around 5, and then goes off about 9.30 or 10. And that seems to be helping, uh, not seeing the growth of the algae. And I've slowly taken some of the fixtures in here out one at a time and really worked on it to get the algae off. It's amazing the adhesion property of that algae. I mean, you really, really, really have to work hard to get it off. And as you can see back here, that one piece past the plants, uh, the algae is not thriving for change, and that's good. And so I need to take that piece out and maybe get it uh, as white as the one over here, which I had out last week and cleaned off. And you see, that was, uh, you could not see the white in that piece uh, last week. And it probably took me. Well, maybe 20 minutes to really scrub and scrub and scrub with wire brushes to get that off. So right now this tank is looking pretty good. I've added uh, some recent additions of platies, add some color to it. We just lost one of the big angels uh, just the other day, but the rest of them continue to thrive. He wasn't doing well for a couple days, so it wasn't a surprise. And uh, my pride and joy are the pearl garamis here. And uh, Plant-wise, we've got a couple Amazon swords here that are not not uh, growing out, but by keeping the leaves that pick up that algae trimmed off, they're staying at least green. And so you see behind that another hygrophila plant. And over here, I just went uh, to the fish factory over in Bristol, Pennsylvania, and picked up 
what turned out to be two plants. I actually paid for one and the way he put it in the bag I ended up with two and th that really big one of those long stem plants is what I was buying and was pleasantly surprised to find I had two of them for the same three dollars and ninety nine cents. So we'll see how that does. Again it's one of those plants that will do well for a while and then whether the chemistry changes I don't know. Uh, water change goes on about once a week. About a third of the tank gets changed out and uh, so that's sort of what's happening on this end. I don't think there's anything else of note. Oh, there is three uh, new fish here and it, it was called a pin ribbon fish of some type. And I'm just looking up here in the corner. Uh, they look beautiful in their tank but these zebras are chasing them so I'm probably going to have to take them out of here because they're going to be destroyed very quickly. Beautiful fish, especially as they flare up against each other. So I'm not doing it justice here on the camera, but take my word for it. Right above where the red beta is, right? And so I've got to go get the net and get them out of there before they uh, get too exhausted. All right, so that's uh, the bow tank here in the living room, my fish room. And uh, give you some sense for what's going on there. We're going to move over to the corner tank, uh, but first let me go get those fish out of there so we can uh, give them a rest. Okay, we're back over in the corner tank, that one that uh, is pie shaped. And this tank has not had the same problem with algae. Now this is LED lighting, but you remember I did switch to LED lighting on the bow tank. So maybe that's helping too, but uh, that bow tank is clear as a bell. This is too. But it's got a slight yellowish tinge to it, to the eye. I'm not sure what it's going to look like here. And my school of neons that you see in the center uh, started diminishing a little bit, down into about uh, 13 I could count one time. So I just added 10 more to it at a good price. They were $2.49 a piece or 10 for $17.99. So for $1.80 piece, that, that was reasonable. I was tempted to actually get cardinals because they weren't that much more. Uh, but I said, I oh, don't know, let's, let's stay with what we've got here. And uh, what else can I tell you here? I've just added four young pearl gouramis. Since the pearl gouramis seem to do so well, I try to go with what works. And so you can see up top there uh, one of the pearl gouramis. And where there's one, there's usually more than one. But they've just been introduced into the tank uh, about an hour ago. So still kind of skittish, but you can see up there toward the top. And they're much smaller, of course, than the ones in the bow tank. But uh, hopefully they'll thrive. That's where the, uh, you know, that one or two that I moved over from here, they were doing very well. And I did lose one of those. One disappointment over here, remember we were watching the baby plants from the sword plant? And you can see it on that stem bowing over to the left, actually arching over to the right. Huh? Uh, they've stopped growing and they don't have roots on them that I can plant at this point. And so I'm letting them stay up close to the light, figuring that'll help them grow, but uh, not, not developing the way I thought they would. I hoped I'd have, you know, like 10 more <laughs> Amazon sword plants. Yeah, to rot the rock, huh? And uh, the gravel in this tank doesn't get gummed up with the algae. It does pretty good. And uh, this tank is off from noon to 2, but the rest of the time it's on, starting at 7 in the morning and going off at 10 at night. So don't have the same problem here. It's the same water, of course. And uh, everybody else seems to be doing fine. Now, I did catch those three pin, fin, whatever they are, and I'll see if I can catch one for you here on the camera. I see one up here. There you go. And uh, they don't look like much right here. But when they were challenging each other, uh, they've got like long black fins and a yellow fin at the top that flares up. And so there's three of them in here. I was quite surprised that I was able to finally catch the three of them because they figured out where in that tank 
it was a good place to hide and they were under the lip of the filter and my big net without taking everything off the top of the tank was having a real challenge at getting to them but uh, I stuck with it and outsmarted them and so they're here so let's see what here get some idea of what they are I don't think I've seen these before but they look beautiful you can see that colorful top and bottom long fin and uh, so I got three of them, figured they would challenge each other and uh, show off why I was attracted to them in the first place. Nothing much new in this tank, uh, plant-wise. I haven't put any new plants in here recently. Uh, so it still looks like a pretty lush garden. Uh, and Acris does not do real well in this tank. Okay? And so look over here, and you can see just a couple stems. That was the same type of plant that you saw over in the bow tank. And instead of being lush green and filling out like six or seven uh, branches of it, I've got three hanging in there. They look kind of uh, haggard, but uh, they're still green and they're growing. It's just that they're not filling in like the one over there. So I don't know what the difference is. Same water, same change, about a third every week. And uh, just love especially the school of neons hidden in the plants in this particular tank. And they have done rather well for quite a few months now, so I'm pleasantly surprised. And uh, the rest of them you've t heard about before. The tiger barbs were raised tiger barbs. They continue to do well. Uh, the red-tailed shark, I think, just went by. I could be wrong. And we've got those flying foxes that keep going back and forth. They're thriving. Oh, there's the red-tailed shark. Or no, I'm sorry. That's the rainbow shark. Or tricolored shark or something. You see the difference? I don't know if I can find the red tail shark in here. Every tank has one red tail shark. As I told you, it's one of my favorite fish. And so when I can find it at a reasonable price, and today I saw it for $3.99 uh, for a decent sized one, surprisingly enough. I was going to get it and I thought, no, I can't do that. I've got one in each tank and two or more do not do well together for whatever reason. Oh, there he is, right in the center. does a good job on the algae, or at least he's always foraging in the plants. And so uh, I think he's helping keep this the way it is. But uh, you see he's maturing nicely. He's got that bright red tail fin and uh, hopefully a white tip on the top fin, the shark top fin, if you will. <laughs> so anyway, there's uh, an update today. I was on the Pennsylvania side of Highway 95, and uh, since it cost five dollars across the bridge uh, from here in New Jersey. I went ahead and went up uh, from Philadelphia where I was doing some volunteer work and uh, stopped at the Hidden Reef. I was quite disappointed. Their big tank of plants was pretty uh, pretty empty and so I didn't get any plants there and uh, even the fish they didn't have a large supply and I thought Memorial Day weekend they would have a lot. Not the case. And then lo and behold, I uh, stopped at the fish factory, which is a very small place just down the road. You have to pass it on my way back, so I always stop in. And it's one of those things, hit and miss. You may find an opportunity, and I take advantage of the opportunity. And uh, so that's where I got the neons today. Uh, they wanted $2.99 for them up at the Hidden Reef. And there's that Pin, fin, whatever they were calling it. I, I don't really know what it's called. But uh, like I said, when they're together, they really uh, do come out nice when they flare those fins at each other. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but at least they're not being chased by the zebras in this tank. So that's a good thing. And so I rescued them uh, into something which may be a more peaceful environment. So it's green. Fish are doing well. Lost a couple of platies recently, but uh, not a big deal. And uh, I've added some color. PetSmart has gone back to having sales on their fish instead of buy two, get one free, which typically wasn't a very good deal. But more recently, the platies go from two forty nine or two ninety nine to a dollar twenty four, and a dollar twenty four, I'll buy ten of them. And so I've added quite a bit of color to both tanks, as you have seen, and uh, they do rather well. A couple of those platies ended up in the office tank. Nothing much new back there, so I don't think I'll take you back there today. And uh, harvested a couple plants out of there for uh, the tanks out here. 
and that's always nice not to have to buy the plants. There's that uh, flying fox, one of three. Nice looking fish, and they, they stay very active. And again, they're always foraging on the plants too, so maybe they're helping me keep the algae down in this particular tank. Not sure, not sure. Hope the, the new 10 neons will integrate with the school. There's the flying fox. And uh, you see some of the yellow potties. At this point, I've got one rainbow fish that came from Ray. And uh, I haven't found any worth buying in the stores to give him some company. So he's doing well by himself, but I sure feel like he's lonely. You know what I mean? And then up top, we still have in every tank at least one betta. And uh, the Hidden Reef continues to be my favorite place to get these because they're very good looking fish <coughs> and they sell for $2.99. They do have more expensive ones, of course, but uh, they tend to be very attractive for a very good price. All right, bye for now.